Hello again, it's Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID Symptom Study app, giving you the update. But first I wanted to say a big thank you to the 4.5 million people who have been logging with us since the uh, pandemic pretty much began in Europe on March the 24th last year. And nearly 2 million of you are still with us, still logging, and have been helping us produce this amazing science and insights into COVID. And it, hopefully it's been a, a worthwhile two-way exercise, uh, an exchange of information and data that's going to continue. And really, I think, set a new paradigm for uh, health-related research. And as well as uh, thanking you guys, and you may have seen the app that Zoe put out yesterday, uh, talking about what happened at the beginning in March last year, about how the app uh, got put together. But of course, there's many people that weren't included in that story uh, in that those first few weeks that have been absolutely crucial. And the role that uh, my colleagues at King's College London have played has been enormous because uh, the team there, and I'm talking about people in the uh, School of Engineering, uh, led by Professor Seb Ossola and his team, were able to take the millions of records that you guys were giving us every day and put that into formats that could be analysed uh, by the academics. And so it really wasn't possible with any one group to do this. We really need a multidisciplinary approach. And there's, uh, there are about 50 people involved behind the scenes doing all this stuff, making uh, this data accessible back to you guys, as well as writing all these papers. So thanks to everybody. And uh, we'll hope that this amazing collaboration continues. Um, now, back to today, the results are a bit disappointing, 4,700 new cases today, which for those who've been following this will know that's been pretty flat for the last 10 days. And we think is uh, reflecting the loosening of a lockdown, uh, schools going back, uh, but it's not anything really to worry about too much. Um, the R value for the UK is around one, uh, it's not going anywhere fast, but underlying that, that headline figure and that 73,000 prevalent cases, which equates to about one in 920 people uh, with symptoms, there's another story building up. And that is that we're starting to see again, like we did last summer, a difference between the regions. So we're seeing that Wales and Scotland, where kids went back to school earlier, they're still those rates are still going up. And in places like the West Midlands, which has had great problems getting rid of the virus, uh, also turning upwards, uh, moving in the wrong direction. Nothing dramatic, but uh, we would have expected to be falling away. And you contrast that with the south of England, uh, the southeast, London in particular, rates are still going down and they're really very low indeed. And overall, don't forget that this rate of... Uh, under 5,000 cases a day is actually one of the lowest in Europe still. And the has to be put in context, of course, how we're doing and we're doing pretty well because the whole reason we're doing this is to help the NHS. Uh, yesterday there were only 98 deaths and there were 360 admissions and 200 the day before that. And less than 5% of hospital beds across uh, the country are occupied by COVID. And it was 50%, if you remember, back then. So we're doing pretty well. Now, why are we still getting this? Uh, why are we flattened out? Why are we not dropping? Well, there's perhaps 1,000 cases that might be due to false positive testing, but still most of them are likely to be real. The When we look in detail at the age range, most people are still under the age of 50 who are getting this. Uh, it's not the older in fact, uh, vaccinated group. And we started to see for the first time an increase in the under 19s. 
So not a big increase, it's not exponential, but we are seeing that that's causing some of these, these changes, which is pretty much as we uh, predicted uh, a few months ago. The reinfection rate, interestingly, is something else we've, we've looked at. A lot of you have had COVID before, and we've got 352 of you who've, uh, we're pretty sure have been retested again, uh, have had it, and we're keeping an eye on that, particularly with new variants, to see if any of those those rates start to come up, which would suggest that our natural immunity wasn't working. But it's a tiny number, so it suggests that our immunity is working pretty well at the moment. Uh, if we look at vaccines, we're up to 30 million vaccines across the country, over half the population, and really second only to Israel in, in how effectively we've been doing this. And this is great news, and nearly a million, you, million of you guys have given us your data, which is invaluable, not only to us, but also to the government. And uh, we should be able to share a paper with you soon about this, but generally it's showing that once you've had that first jab after 30 days, you're getting about 74% protection. Uh, and it, you seem to be protected, whatever the jab is you're having. So you do build protection after those 12 days. The first 12 days, you've got no protection at all. And we are seeing quite a few cases, do be careful. But even after 12, it, your immunity does start to build up. And obviously it would get better once you've had that second jab. But you still are protected probably against uh, severe COVID in those situations. And we're, we're getting more data on that and uh, obviously showing some differences, uh, but still the numbers of people who are getting infections is still fairly low after a vaccine. We're just over 2000 of you uh, have reported uh, PCR positive tests after a vaccine. So still gonna be careful. And just a, a note to say that um, a lot of the, the press recently and government messaging has been about these worrying about what's going on in, in France and Germany and the fact that they have some of these new variants. Uh, I'm not that worried about these new variants if we're being vaccinated. Uh, there's always a risk, but I think it's pretty minor. I think we'd be much better off rather than worrying about foreign holidays and people um, Coming back from there, we'd be better putting our own house in order, making sure that we get the numbers down, particularly in these spots uh, that find it hard to get rid of the virus uh, that we're seeing across the country. And that's by greater awareness of symptoms, testing everybody, whatever their symptoms are, not relying on these old fashioned uh, criteria and uh, trying to work out how we can isolate people better and do a better job. And if we get our own house in order, that's much more effective because we've now got a huge vaccinated group of population and I don't see any reason why as soon as they've had the full vaccinations, um, people shouldn't start to get uh, back to normal. So I'm pretty relaxed about this and uh, I hope reassured some of you with your, your concerns. Uh, we're going in the right direction and I'm confident we'll be through this soon. So thank you for your support over the last year. Stay logging. Keep safe.